Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speeder, and today we're gonna be talking about five of the top Dota lanes in all of Dota. So these are lane combinations that are either just really, really, really good in the first 10 minutes, or they have synergies that enable them to be good throughout the lane. Now, of course, even these synergies that are good throughout the game, I'm talking about heroes that will still be paired together within the first 10 minutes, the laning stage. So without further ado, let's talk about the top Dota lanes that you can draft to have much better success in your solo matchmaking. Also, I wanna tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm gonna be able to help you. Like literally with the Game League website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you wanna become absolutely broken, <laughs> but like actually you wanna become much, much better at Dota and you wanna take it more seriously, the Game League website is gonna help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm gonna help you get to the next rank and I'll see you there. All right, starting off with the first lane, this is a lane I saw from Tundra. I believe other teams did it as well, but also my team ran it recently as well. And it feels extremely good to me. And that is Tied Ricky. Now at first glance, or if you know anything about the heroes, you would actually be thinking that this lane isn't that good. Tidehunter is a hero that can get pretty aggressive with Gush, but Ricky doesn't do too much early on. Yes, Ricky does do physical damage, and so it seems okay with Gush, and yes, there is some synergy, right? You can Gush the position 5 and potentially blink strike on the position 5 and get a kill. However, Ricky's early abilities are not very good. And so there tends to be no kill potential, but that's okay because really what these heroes do well is they enable each other to do what they want. Tidehunter in most lanes, his best case scenario is just free farming, getting complete solo XP and maxing out his anchor smash and Kraken shell, being able to do whatever he wants once he hits about level four. And Ricky is a hero that doesn't really want to play the lane for a long time. He doesn't scale well with levels, and he's much better off at stacking camps and contesting runes due to his high mobility. And so basically, all you do is abuse the fact that Ricky is very tanky at level 1 through 3, and he can drag the creep wave. He's gonna give Tide as much XP as possible, Tide's gonna max out Anger Smash and Kraken Shell, get all the levels, and then once Tide is level 3, Tide can solo lane the majority of lanes as long as he puts 2 points in Kraken Shell. If you don't understand how Kraken Shell works, once he's level 3, with 2 points in Kraken Shell, Tidehunter can block 34 damage from every auto attack, meaning creeps do 0 damage to you and heroes practically also do 0. If they're anchor smash, they basically do 0. You buy a bunch of mangoes, a ring of health, and you're completely invincible to the majority of Dota lanes. In the meanwhile, Ricky can stack camps, roam mid, pick up bounty runes, do things that Ricky support wants to do while he's waiting for minute 15 to come along. And then the last thing I'd like to mention about this combo is I think the heroes kind of just pair well together in the game as well. Tidehunter is a hero that doesn't really set the pace of the game. He's a good team fighter and can cut dangerous creep waves. Ricky, you know, he's good in team fights, but for a different reason. It's not about his AoE control, even though Smokescreen kind of does that. It's more about the sleeping dart and the high tempo the hero provides in team fights with a low cooldown smoke screen at a low cooldown sleeping dart. So not only do these heroes have a weird synergy in the lane, they also scale well just in terms of how the map plays because Tidehunter takes the dangerous farm while Ricky runs around and scouts things out. Alright, getting into the second combo now, this is way different, and I mean way different than the Tide Ricky. Tide Ricky is obviously meant to be very defensive and play more for a later timing. Nature's Prophet and Train Protector, this lane, the majority of heroes can't lane into it at all. Even something like Undying, one of the best laners in Dota, can struggle into a Nature's Prophet Treon. And here's why. I think the main way to counter Nature's Prophet is to go on him and try to all in him. And typically the way you do that is heroes like Dawnbreaker are pretty good. Uh, I feel like Tusk is pretty good. Something like Brood tends to be pretty good. A lot of these heroes are physical damage. Now there are obviously magical damage uh, combos in the early game. For instance, something like Caudal Mars, right? Could be pretty decent at killing off Nature's Prophet. But the fact that Leech Seed and Living Armor, the two spells I generally recommend taking, heal Nature's Prophet, it's basically impossible to trade back. On top of that, if you want to get really nasty, you buy Blightstone on Nature's Prophet, which is actually the standard build on the hero. It's Blightstone, four branches and tangos, and then the, the tree and protector buys an Orb of Venom, and all of a sudden, every time you go on someone, they're slowed and they're Blightstone, and then the tree and hits them even harder, right? And it's great, as I said, this is the natural build on Nature's Prophet. He doesn't have to fit a Blightstone oddly into his build. 
most heroes that lean with Treant can't buy a Blightstone, which is a, a shame because you don't take advantage of the fact that the hero hits for 100 at level 1. So honestly, this lane, you cannot fight them back. Leech Seed at level 2 with level 2 Treants is way too much damage. You're going to get pushed off the Creep Wave, and if you try to all in the Nature's Prophet, which tends to be the way to kill this hero, he gets Living Armored, which is like 6 armor at level 1, and he doesn't take any damage. So yeah, I, I've seen this lane play out. There's practically nothing that can beat it within the first six, seven minutes until really ultimates come out. Next up, going back to more of a defensive lane. This is kind of a scaling lane that I also saw in the pro scene. And this is Phoenix Spectre. This revolves around the Mango Spectre build. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this lane because it's very easy to understand. Basically, Phoenix and Spectre don't threaten very many kills. They kind of can at level 3 with level 2 Spectral Dagger and the high damage of Fire Spirits at level 2, but for the most part, the reason you're picking this lane is just to play defensive and keep each other alive. The great thing about Phoenix is he's actually one of the best defensive supports in the game. Fire Spirits reducing 80 attack speed at level 1 means if you ever try to all in someone, he can kind of defuse the situation with ease. On top of that, it's very hard to kill Phoenix because of the 80 attack speed slow and because he can fly away. So essentially the main concept in this lane is Spectre's extremely tanky and you should buy like six mangoes, sometimes nine if you're Skeeter. And then from there, the Phoenix, if you need to, can skill Sunray to heal him. Typically you don't do this until level four. And then yeah, you just keep each other alive. If someone gets gone on, you cast Dagger to slow them, you cast Spirits to attack speed slow them, you play for pulls, and then really because you can keep each other alive and sustain the lane, then you have this deadly, and I mean, deadly mid to late game combo. Phoenix Spectre, when we're talking about scaling heroes, these are two of the best in Dota. So while it is a theoretically very greedy lane, you can get away with it pretty easily most of the time, and you can end up scaling into the late game better than almost any other lane comp. Now the fourth combo, we're going back to another domination one, and that is Undying Visage. Now Tundra picked this recently, and this is where I'm getting it from. I know I take a lot of inspiration from Tundra, all right? They are a pretty good team, and I like watching them. They have a lot of cool ideas, but they ended up losing the game with this combo. However, it looked nasty. I think they lost for reasons completely outside of the laning stage, because the laning stage was disgusting. 33 had like 35 CS and 20 denies to like the 6 CS of the Terror Blade he was against. And let's talk about why this lane is completely disgusting. Visage has one major weakness. He can get run at. The hero has mediocre movement speed and very low armor. Undying, of course, is like the best frontline tank in the laning stage. You solve that problem. Soul Assumption on Visage is one of the best spells in the early levels. On a 4 second cooldown, you can do like 230 damage if you get 3 charges. That is insane. Most spells do about 100 damage at level 1. This is more than double that. So, and it's on a 4 second cooldown. It's very mana intensive, but that is why <laughs> the Undying will actually be either starting with Bassy, where the Visage will be starting with Bassy, and this is a big component to this. Bassy, Ring of Bassy, for all you who don't know or aren't too familiar with the item, is an item that gives 0.5 mana regen to the holder, and then 1 mana regen to the holder and to the person next to them. So if you start with a Ring of Bassy, you get 1.5 mana regen, and the person next to you gets 1 mana regen. So they actually get a very significant portion of the mana regen. And this is obviously great because usually when you buy Bassy on a hero like Visage, you have a big problem. The big problem is you don't last it too well. You don't have any damage from Bassy. All it gives is mana regen. And on top of that, you are very susceptible to getting run at. You're not tanky from it. You don't get HP regen from it. And on top of that, the mana regen from it is actually not good enough for soul assumption. However, you don't need to start Tangos when you have an Undying in your lane, because he's going to secure you the, the early levels so easily where you don't even have to start Tangos. So you can start a Mango, making sure you have enough mana in the early levels for soul assumption. Then after the Bounty Runes, you buy Tangos, another Mango, a couple Mangos if you need on Massage, and the lane is secured. And the big thing to understand about this lane is Decay plus soul assumption. Soul assumption does a ton of damage, Decay lowers their max HP. It also, with the combination of a couple right clicks from Undying, drops them into an HP range where they basically cannot fight back. You can't ever go on Visage because if you try, you get Tombstone. If you go on Undying, you just die to Soul Assumption. There is almost no way out of this lane. Honestly, the only thing I could imagine doing okay against something like Undying Visage is something like Nature's Prophet Treant, which has an incredible amount of damage at level 1 to fight back against the Undying, specifically physical damage that deals well with Undying's somewhat noticeable armor problem. But man, 
the terror blade he had like 380 max hp one sole assumption is half of his health he could not walk up it was honestly unbelievable definitely a lane i would recommend trying out and finally we have another hard lane dominating lane this is one of the most straightforward lanes you could possibly pick and yet it's extremely broken in the early levels and that is crystal maiden pudge crystal maiden is known for her early level dominance and honestly pudges as well meat hook is one of the highest damage spells in the game considering it does pure damage. In specific, it does 150 pure damage. It is one of the highest level 1 damage nukes in the game, and obviously when you pair that with Crystal Maiden, who has two disables and two nukes at level 2, you are going to die. It really is that straightforward. You frostbite the person, you hook the person, you turn on Rot, which is also one of the highest damage spells in the game, and they die. All Sam has to do is spam like 14 mangoes, Pudge can focus on sustain. Also, if the lane is really easy, he can rush phase boots and chase people down. That's it. And it's good in the mid game too, because you can frostbite in the hook into the mid game. But yeah, it, it's, I had to play against this as Beastmaster, unplayable. It, it's so awful. It's awful. And on top of that, one of the nice things is Pudge does have a bit of a mana regen problem. Flesh Heap costs a bit of mana. Uh, you don't want to buy any mana regen item. Maybe you could buy mangoes on Pudge. I could see that being part of the build. Like a Ring of Health, two branches, tangos, two mangoes. Like I could see this being a decent build on Pudge. But for the most part, having a little bit of mana regen from CM, which I believe is 1.2 at, at uh, level 3 when she takes her spell, if she opts to take her spell, is extremely good as well. So honestly, if you're looking for a lane that kills within the first two levels, I would definitely recommend the Undying Visage or the Pudge CM. These lanes, as long as you synergize together, that's all you have to do. A little bit of synergy, a little bit of coordination, which I know is hard for you guys. I know you somehow are extremely good at casting Hook right before Crystal Maiden gets in range for Frostbite. It's unbelievable what you guys managed to do in your pubs, but nonetheless, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace! And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.